Today I am going to talk about installing the Logitech C922 on Windows 10 and optimizing settings for streaming. Hello, I am Brian Roma and this is We Create Your Sunshine, the show where we give you bite-sized tasks that you can do to build and scale your business. And we're going to dig into uh, installing and configuring the Logitech C922. Uh, and so if you have a moment, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What are you currently using for your streaming solution? What kind of web camera are you using? And what are you using to share your video content with other people? Is that in OBS? Is that in Zoom? Is that Ecamm? Is that vMix? I'd love to hear by commenting below. Okay, so let's dig right in. Uh, so today we are going to use the stock Logitech uh, application that you can get right from their website. There are some third-party applications that you can use, but we're going to do just a just a plain install and talk about how you can take the built-in application and uh, optimize it so that it plays better. You get better quality and you have a little more control. Um, so if you go to, if you Google Logitech webcam software or look up the name of this particular uh, software is called Logitech Capture, um, you can, t a, a quick search engine uh, search will pull you to this website. Uh, I am on Windows 10, I'm using Windows 10 64-bit, um, so you select the appropriate uh, operating system version that uh, you intend to use, so I'm going to download that. And it takes just a minute. So now that we've downloaded it, uh, we hit install. It might challenge you uh, if you um, that that you need to use admin credentials in order to run it. Uh, then we hit uh, and click here on install Logitech Capture. Uh, it's up to you to share analytics data. Some people are very particular about their privacy information. I usually don't mind. Um, you, you know, if you want to be super conservative, you can say no thanks. I'm going to say yes. It's completely up to you. This takes just a minute. Now an important note uh, when you're connecting your uh, camera, uh, once you get it out of the box, you can plug it right into your machine. It's a standard USB connection for this particular type of webcam. Um, but we highly recommend that you connect to the high speed A high speed USB port on your system. Um, and it's signified with the SS. Uh, sometimes there's lines that are underneath it, but something uh, denoting high-speed USB uh, and not through a passive hub or USB 2.0 or slower uh, connection on your system. Just a quick note as we go into our settings, uh, different people have different philosophies when it comes to what they do within their camera settings and then what they do in their environment. Uh, and that's going to influence uh, how you manipulate different factors to get the shot or the look that you uh, uh, want to have for your particular show or your Zoom call or something like that. Uh, so it's my personal philosophy uh, that you take the time to light yourself and your set properly. Um, and you do as much as you can in the physical space as you as you can, um, and then bring your camera equipment in and try to get it uh, set up. And then we play with um, you know uh, zoom settings or 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 uh, exposure settings or any of those kinds of things. Um, some folks will go with the minimal lighting that they've got, and then they push their camera as hard as they possibly can. Um, and that's certainly one way to try to achieve an image, but uh, you might run into performance issues and it'll certainly affect the quality of what you end up recording or sharing with other people. Okay, let's uh, dive in. Uh, so you can see over here, uh, I have Logitech Capture. Uh, I have the 922C plugged in and it is off to the side here, uh, pointed at a, you know, kind of off center here, uh, pointed at a portion of my backdrop. Um, but this is what the interface looks like. Um, I only have one uh, USB camera directly plugged into the system, so I only have one source here that's connected. Um, we're, we're only going to worry about uh, uh, going through the settings for this particular single source. Uh, so the first setting that you need to think about is uh, this priority section, which is either to prioritize when, you're, when your camera is struggling for performance, um, do you want to prioritize frame rate or do you want to prioritize exposure? I highly recommend that you prioritize frame rate and the reason for that is you want your footage to be as 
uh, smooth and professional looking as you can. And like I mentioned before, I'm going to presume that we've done our due diligence and put the right lighting in place so the camera shouldn't be struggling to get the proper exposure for your face. If you're sitting in a room where you only have sunlight, um, then throughout the day as clouds go overhead and so on, uh, the lighting's gonna change and your the quality of your footage is gonna degrade quite a bit. Um, and so prioritizing exposure might be something you want to consider, but I don't recommend it. I recommend you get some, some independent lighting. Uh, by the way, uh, let me go down here and, and just point out, so the 922C has its own built-in microphone. Uh, in further tutorials, we're going to talk about adding a secondary microphone instead of using a built-in one, one that's either built into your uh, system, like in your laptop lid, or one that's integrated with a web camera. We're going to use a studio, a higher-end studio quality um, microphone. Uh, so I recommend uh, turning off, and you can see right here, um, you can see the, the uh, voice, the audio meter bouncing a little bit because it, it's catching my voice. Um, with the webcam. I recommend turning that off. It's going to save you some heartache in Zoom or OBS or Ecamm uh, further down the road because we were actually not going to use this. Uh, so uh, we're going to prioritize for frame rate. We need to make sure to mute this before we go forward. Uh, the next step is to look at your composition here and that's the zoom portion of the panel. If I grab this slider and I start to grab it uh, and slide it a little bit at all, uh, it, and punch in, you can see the image increase in size here. It uh, enables these um, slider buttons, which gives us the ability to pan, tilt, and there's, there's some flexibility there. Um, and then obviously we can punch in further as we need to. So um, here, let me, uh, and if, if you go through a, a series of settings and you're not particularly happy and you're not sure how to back things out, you don't have to remember all the steps that you took. Um, if you're, especially if you're setting things up from scratch, it's okay to go ahead and hit the reset button. It's gonna say, do you wish to reset to default? And it's gonna get rid of these custom pan and tilt settings. You say yes, and if you notice, it punches back out and goes to the uh, system default. Um, so I recommend that you get in pretty close, so mid rib cage uh, to the top of the head for composition with maybe just a little bit of room at the top of, you know, over your head that's referred to as headroom, making sure that you've got a little bit of headroom. Um, and so depending on where your camera is and where you're standing in proximity to it, you might need to drag the slider in to get that kind of composition, similar to what I have in this panel. And then you might need, need to tweak just a little bit um, with these rockers. Now you could also, if you have like a camera arm that the webcam is mounted to, you can obviously physically adjust it. And I would also recommend doing that first to get it to eye height um, and then start zooming in and so on. You want uh, your camera lens to be approximately uh, eye height or a little bit above, not a ton, but a little bit above uh, eye height. So we're gonna reset that. Uh, I recommend not using autofocus. Do not turn on autofocus. And the reason for that is if you're moving around in front of your camera or if you're trying to put things in front of your camera, um, uh, especially entry level or mid entry level uh, web cameras, uh, they might hunt and try to pull focus because things are moving around and it's trying to keep things sharp and focused. And then you'll start to get um, that really annoying bouncing that happens with web cameras where they're trying to focus between two different things because the automated system doesn't know exactly what your intended shot composition is. Uh, so let's say for the sake of argument that this particular light bulb is the subject of my shot, right? Um, so I'm going to scroll back up here for just a minute. And I'm going to scroll, scroll, I'm going to zoom in, zoom in. And you can see it's it's uh, dragging it over here. So I'm going to center it, okay? Now, um, what I can do is I can play... As you see, as I play with the focus button, it starts to, let's punch in quite a bit more. This is a, a trick that you can do with uh, a lot of consumer uh, level cameras. So if I zoom way in here, you can kind of see, you see how the, the lines on the, um, the socket are kind of blurry. Um, now I've got something kind of concrete that I can play with the focus on to try to get focus pulled. 
um, and, and you can get kind of close. Now, something at this distance for, for the webcam uh, to my backdrop, that might be a little bit difficult with the lighting conditions there. That's, that's not optimal. It's a little bit blurry. Uh, but when you do this with yourself, and you could even ask somebody to help you out, um, zoom in on your eyes. Um, that's not going to be your, your final um, composition, but zoom in and pan until, until you get your eyes in the frame, uh, and then use your focus settings to make sure that your eyes are very sharp, and then back everything back out to get the, the proper um, uh, composition. Let's, uh, so I'm going to restore that back to default. We're going to put autofocus back to zero, uh, or the, the focus lighter here, and turn off autofocus. Uh, I'm not going to get into white balancing. Um, that's uh, light, uh, color temperature uh, of light, and and all of that stuff. And I'm just I'm just not going to get there. I would just recommend you keep auto white balance on. Um, I'm not going to get into image settings. Your anti flicker is fine at the default. Um, uh, chroma key is if you attempt to do a green screen. If you're watching this particular video, it probably means you. Uh, it's a new enough topic that you probably need to practice with it, so I recommend not doing anything with chroma key. Um, you know, get get your camera set up and practice going live and streaming. You know, li live streaming to YouTube and and you know use these settings on your Zoom calls or um, you know Microsoft Teams or or whatever your particular platform is. And then after you get your feet wet, then maybe look at something advanced like trying to uh, uh, do a a uh, chroma key. Uh, and then advanced settings. If for some reason you've got your camera in a strange configuration, like maybe you've got it mounted upside down uh, or something like that, uh, you could check the boxes here to flip your image around so that this, this would be a way by default. Um, here, and I'll hold this up. Uh, by default, uh, the um, letters, the writing uh, on, a, on a particular piece of text are the right way, so you don't need to flip that. But if your camera was set up any, uh, you know, in another way other than uh, how it's depicted on the front of the box, then you might want to turn on advanced settings and, and then hit the slider. Um, so that's the main uh, slider bit, or the main uh, source configuration. Um, and if we go, I'm, I'm going to uh, so I also recommend taking off the watermark. Let's turn that off. People don't need to know it's a Logitech camera. Uh, I'm not going to do text overlay. You could. This is an advanced setting if you wanted to do something kind of like a lower thirds, like putting your title in or something like that. But I'm I'm going to keep that off for now. I recommend against any kind of effects in here. Um, so it takes processing power of your camera, it takes processing power of your system. If you're doing uh, in-camera touch-up or virtual backgrounds or anything like that, I recommend not doing those things and actually um, getting yourself and your set uh, dressed and lit the way you need them to because eventually you're going to run into performance issues where it either doesn't look great or your system starts to bog down because of the, the different settings that you've got. So maybe at some point you might want to take a look at that text overlay bit. Okay, for video settings, I recommend uh, going at 30 frames per second. That's the maximum here. I actually recommend going at 60p, but this particular camera, 30 frames per second is the maximum. And if we go... Uh, uh, so I, by turning on an advanced settings, there's a framing grid here. This might come in handy um, for you to set your composition initially and then turn it back off. This this grid would help you if you're new to, to the rule of thirds and using these intersections uh, to create an interesting shot. This might be cool for you to, to play with a little bit, but it's not something that I would recommend leaving on. Uh, but in case you want to take a look at that, that's under the video settings, advanced settings, and then turning it, oop, turning it back on. Um, Oh, and um, so I didn't show the top here. So at the very top, I selected full HD, that's 1080p. I recommend uh, going at 1080p instead of 720 or 360, and that is the under this landscape setting, this category at the very top. Um, that's the best quality that this particular camera can, uh, can push to your system. Um, so we're going to go with that. And we're not going to worry about audio settings, as we described before. We're uh, disabling the microphone on the system. This is a camera. Let a camera be a camera. Let's get a good microphone and use that instead. 
uh, and these are uh, hotkeys that are associated with the system. Um, you can take a look at this at your leisure. If you wanted to use the Logitech software to do things like recording, you could. Um, there are other pieces of, pieces of software that might perform, perform a little bit better, but this is free. Um, so you might want to take a look at that. Uh, and then if you need to set up a default account. So once you get everything configured within Logitech Capture, the next step would be to go into your video software and make sure to select this particular camera as a source. Um, it's really important if you're using, uh, you know, VMix or OBS, Microsoft Teams or uh, Zoom uh, to make sure to go into your uh, streaming platform of choice and make sure that this becomes your main source. Uh, so I've got my configuration settings for Zoom pulled up here, and as you can see, I've got my HD60S as the camera, and it's not displaying anything because uh, I'm actually using vMix right now, and the resources are taken, um, so the, the ca that camera that's attached to this won't work. But we don't, we're, we're not concerned about that right now. Anyways, um, what we really care about is this uh, C922 uh, ProStream. Uh, webcam and so I'm going to select that and I'm going to show you something that's kind of important so if I select that if you take a look the zoom uh, preview window is still blanked out um, well the part of the reason for that is that we have in the background uh, we have the Logitech Capture software uh, running and it's connected to the camera uh, so zoom can't uh, connect and provide and, and, and interact with that camera device because the Logitech configuration software is already there. So it's important when you're done to close out your configuration software. Uh, so I'm going to put this back to the HD60S just to do that. I'm going to pull this out of the way for a minute. Uh, I'm going to close this. Pull this back down. Okay, and I'm going to go back here. And there you go. So once I close the software back out, uh, now Zoom can access that particular device. Uh, that becomes my default camera. Uh, I recommend that you keep it that way. Um, and uh, you know you have all of the different things that you could do. Now keep in mind, uh, you have some similar basic uh, configuration settings in the video settings of Zoom. And if you're not careful, if you're not keeping track of where you're configuring things, you could configure uh, a particular performance or behavior to be one way in Zoom and a different way in Logitech Capture, and that might create some headaches for you. Uh, so uh, my recommendation, um, let me hit back here. My recommendation would be to leave uh, the settings here. You know, make sure that you have H HD checked if you don't have that. You know, uh, most people, it, you know, they've got that set up. You don't need to worry about worry about mirroring your video. Your camera is already set up to do that for you, and I showed you where to do that checkbox in Logitech Capture. Uh, again, I, I I recommend not selecting touch up my appearance and adjust for low light. Uh, let the you know light yourself uh, and 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 take care of your set properly, uh, and then let the software just take care of getting the best image that you can. So. Um, I would recommend leaving this as, as default as you possibly can. Double check that this is HD, select the right source, and then configure everything else in uh, Logitech Capture. So that was the configuration and installation of Logitech C922 uh, and using Logitech Capture to dial it in so that you can get the image that you're looking for and then choosing that particular camera device at, uh, in your uh, streaming software such as Zoom. Uh, if you found this particular tutorial useful and would like to learn more things like it, we would ask that you uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you get notified when new content comes out, uh, and we're going to put more content out like this. We Create Your Sunshine is all about putting all of the incremental steps that you need to take that take you one step closer to having your business built and structured enough that you can focus on what lights you up. So anything from video production to budgeting, uh, from outsourcing or, or hiring on and adding on to your company to corporate structure, um, we're here to provide the support that you need um, so that you can get your business launched and into orbit. So I'm Brian, take care.